What's going on, YouTube? It's James Schreiber, Fantasy Battle Report. I got another battle report for you today. I got round four of Strength in Numbers D2. D2 Strength in Numbers. Anyways, uh, so if you guys watched my first three games, I had a... We, I had a, two big wins, or two medium wins, and one huge loss. Um, at the same time, our team had a small loss, big win, big loss. So we're just kind of bouncing everywhere. Jeff Parkers was calling us the ping pongers because we were just bouncing around. Anyways, uh, or pinballers, pinballers. That's what he called us. Anyways, uh, so uh, day, day two here, we're playing against Ohio Hammer. And Ohio Hammer is being led around by, I think it was John Francis picking the, the teams. I want to say it was John Francis. It could have been Andrew Sherman. I don't remember who was playing teams against me. But basically... Um, we had a, uh, a a different lineup than what we did last game. Last game we played against the, the Brews and the Brews. You know, there's there's giant freaking um, hell cannons going around. There's bloodthirster list, and then there's like these um, um, Justin Bergie's list. It was just a lot of reds everywhere. And here our reds are a little bit more spread out. So it's like the one thing that that I really couldn't fight was actually Andrew Sherman. Uh, Andrew Sherman was rocking. Out alchemist on top of a cannon and a steam tank cannon so it was like the one list i was like no no thank you on the same token uh we wanted um nick to fight andrew sherman we wanted jesse to fight i think it was john francis and then i forgot the last guy graham what did graham play I'm trying to remember open link let's find out Ugh. kingdom echo -tain. And I think, I want to say, what ended up happening was, I dropped myself first to avoid Sherman. Uh, Sherman uh, ended up getting Nick like we wanted. We got um, John for hold the center against Graham, which was what we wanted. You know, it's King of Equitain versus Skeletons. And then um, I ended up getting Terrace, which I was okay with Terrace. I was okay with fighting Terrace or Francis. Um, which was totally okay. The minute that Terrace found out that he was playing me, he was like, not this guy! I'm not kidding. The minute they pulled out the cards, he looks at it, he, and he goes, oh, I don't want to play the ogre guy, I don't want to play this guy. Oh, hell no, I don't want to play uh, this, this orc and goblin guy. No, 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 no. And then when they called his name, he was just like, shit! He's like, why did you guys, I told you guys, anybody but him, anybody but him. <laughs> so I'm glad I, I can invoke fear like that, just a little bit, as much as a bloodthirster invokes fear in me. But anyways, let's go over that game really quick and let's see how this goes. Um, over here I got my <clears throat> uh, 30 cave goblins, my uh, 10 iron boys. I got uh, Krom the Conqueror. My voice did not want to get that deep. Krom. There we go. Krom the Conqueror. <laughs> Anyways, uh, over here I got uh, the K-Pack, Koopa, or Koopa, <laughs> Koopa's there too, it's the 4Ks, the K-K-K-K, -K -K -K. Uh, Koopa, Kone, Kaiser, Ko Koga, there you go, Koopa, Ka Koopa, Kaiser, Kone, Koga, there we go, uh, anyways, I got, um, it's 5Ks with King in there, King Koopa, Ka Kaiser, Kone, Koga, Koga. Anyways, the A Rock, the Mother of Dragon, the Devourer of Worlds, the Eater of Slayers. Um, over here, I got uh, the, the the so far the tournament MVP, the freaking Bazooka and the Green Moon Horde, the Horde, the followers of the Green Moon, um, with their White Lion banner. That guys, if you guys ever wanted to know why the banner is white, it's because it's a White Lion pelt. Okay. Anyways, got my uh, Bushwhackers there. I got twenty Bushwhackers. Uh, <laughs> which if you guys watch my why are bushwhackers full of shit uh video or whatever i call it, labeled it uh i can't take more than 20 but i can't take less than 20 so i'm stuck at 20 <laughs> but i got 24 goblins they have the banner of discipline they have backs of the pyromaniac in there because when he blows up we don't want them running away um and then i got general zod general zod is not pulling his weight this tournament dun, 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 dun. is he on the cutting block that's a good question. And then I got my uh, five Wolf Rider Chaff. All right. Excuse me. For magic. Magic. I got wheel turns. I got twisted. I keep getting fucking twisted effigy. Uh, and the Will of the Wisp. I got enveloping embers, immolation, cascading fire, and flaming swords. Now, I'm going to go ahead. We're playing counter thrust. And, oh, I got to find his army. There it is. So he has these freaking Slaneshi. This is all Slaneshi 
or excuse me, lusty, quote, end quote, lusty army. The whole army is demons lust. So these are two lust chariots, whatever the hell they're called. Let me look at the names because I pulled up the list. I should have the list right here. Uh, Shrine of Temptation. Now these guys have D6 plus three impact hits for 450 points. Holy crap. Now they're not I was wondering, are they towering presence? I don't think they are, but they have just a shit ton of attacks. They have guys on top of poison. They have guys on top of AP. They have guys on top of plus one wound. They have freaking um, some aura of ecstasy, which I'm just curious on what the hell kind of ecstasy this shit is. I mean, like, seriously, what's going on here? But uh, these guys, apparently he told me that they give a bonus, I think devastating charge for if they charge in with a unit or something like that. Something like that. I'm not entirely sure. But anyways, he has two of these guys. These things scare me because they can, with impact, has destroyed my spider. They can. All right? It's going to be hard, but it, it's they're fast. They're, they're movement 10. And it's the only thing on the table that outmaneuvers me with my, my wolf's chariots. Um, over here, he has a giant horde of sirens. And he has, oops, wrong demon list. He has 26 sirens and another unit of 26 sirens. Then he has two harbingers of lust. One has witchcraft. One has evocation. One of them's the general. One of them's the BSB. That simple. <laughs> They're basically the same. They just have two spells apiece. Um, and then he has a bunch of claw fiends. Hold on. Let me pull up this. Oh. Yeah. Let's go. He actually has two more witchcraft guys in there, two more harbingers in there that just have witchcraft and evocation. So he has an even split of spells. And then he has the claw fiends over here, uh, which he has a, some proxies as ogres for claw fiends because he doesn't have enough medusas going around. All right, so we're playing counter thrust, right? And it's again, it's playing that game of who's going to get to drop first. And basically, I have a sour taste in my mouth from the last counter thrust because I try to I try to take that role initiative and take it, but I just did not play the same the same game this time. So I'm just like, you know what? I'm going to leave it like so. So what ends up happening here is I ended up putting the my wolf riders on the line. He ended up dropping basically based on that. And then I ended up putting my Iron Orcs on this side to kind of push his guys back. And what ended up happening, I want to say we're playing flags. I'm almost positive we're playing flags and he only has two scoring units. But what ended up happening here is I put my Iron Orcs on this side. Then I deployed center heavy and he wins the roll off for turn one. So let's go start off his turn. Turn one. Demons of Lust, these sexy, sexy demons of lust, they're going to go ahead and charge a long charge into my Iron Orcs. Well, granted, they're movement 10, and we're only 18 inches apart, so he's going to need 8 to get in. Oh, I'm going to lose my Iron Orcs pretty fast. All right, so he charges these guys into, my, I think, my dogs, and uh, this one fails, but the other one gets in. They, brrr, they all get in. All right, so... Turn one, he's already on my side. Now this is a problem because this chariot here, once it kills my iron orcs, it's gonna just turn into my flank and it has a huge movement range. It could just rip apart my flank. So uh, magic phase, he got seven power dice. First thing he does is he gives my Krom, or Krom, Krom, Bewitching Glare. Uh, and uh, I just kind of have to take it on the chin because he has some other spells that I was trying to stop. I, try, I, try, I can't really remember what he had, but Bewitching Glare was like the least of my worries. I was like, yeah, it's a chance I could fail stupidity, but we'll see how that goes. Um, over here, Impact hits. Boom! Just takes out like shit, seven of my Iron Orcs. And then before my Iron Orcs get to swing, they are murdered. So he goes ahead and he... he now here's the deal. is He can't really turn because his center can't overlap on top of his um, his other guys his uh, claw fiends so the claw fiends kind of messed up his chariot's ability to go to the flanks on the next turn which I'm going to have to take care of but at the same time my force goblins in this picture are in deep deep shit they are in deep deep shit so I have to take it upon myself to go ahead and do this I'm going give to give you guys a 10 second warning here but um, I'm going to go ahead and it's going to be Zod and Goblins turn one. Zod and Goblins turn one. I'm going to call it the Wog on three, two, one. Wog! So I'm going to go ahead and charge. And so I have to charge since these guys on the right failed their charge. And this is why I called out the Wog. I'm going to need a 10 on Swift Stride to get my Goblins, my Goblin Horde into 
those fail charging claw fiends. If I could nail this charge, overrun with swift stride, might I add, and get into the flank of that horde, I win the game. That, that that's his general and his and uh, I think it's just his general, maybe his BSP. One of I think they're split. But basically, what ends up happening is the goblin bazooka and the horde wipe out that unit. Uh, with a charge flank, all the freaking combat res, they're not steadfast, I'll just rip them apart. And um, and then top it off, they're only like T3 models, so I will get some wounds off. So I have to sacrifice my dogs, I charge my dogs into the least threatening uh, guy on the table, which is the, the sirens on the left side, because basically what ends up happening is, no matter who I charge, he's gonna get a, co uh, a free combat reform once he kills my dogs. So I charge into them thinking, you know what, they have the furthest uh, ability, or I want them to shred my dogs so they don't chase closer to me, but I want to be able to um, it, make sure the redirect doesn't really threaten me much. Anyways, all this planning for that charge, I fail the charge. <laughs> oh man, so this is how the table looks. My dogs got into over there, my goblins fail that charge, which sucks because now I'm going to get charged by that, uh, the other shrine of temptation. I move my forest goblins this way, and I make sure I have enough room to flee past my uh, spider, my, my, my A-Rock. Part of my strategy here is to shoot, and I mean shoot an ungodly amount of tomahawks into those two claw fiends. Now, they're running around butt naked, I believe. I, they might have like a small armor save, but let's see. Claw fiends, five up ward, that's it. They're pretty much butt naked. They just have a ward save. So I'm thinking, okay, I have a Skull Splitter, I have Pyromancy spells, I have a shit ton of Tomahawks, I should be able to kill them. Now, not only that, but I'm actually out of line of sight of his Shrine of Temptation. The only thing I am not out of line of sight of is is that uh, Claw Fiend's up on the top by the dogs. I think I might be. I don't remember. Uh, Koopa and Krama are on the right side. I decide to use them together to go ahead and go into that, that giant uh, Siren block. And uh, it's 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 intimidating him. He's like, I don't want to commit to either one. Uh, Krom didn't fail stupidity, but at the same time, I'm keeping a good enough distance where I'm still outranging him. What I'm trying to do with Koopa is have Koopa keep line of sight of the left of the hill in case he tries to move closer, and Koopa could get into a flank of either the shrine or those harbinger or the claw fiends. Uh, I don't really know what I'm doing with my cave goblins. I moved them this way, I think, to try to release fanatics when somebody gets close, but we'll see how that goes. Um, and then, as you can see, this is this side of the table. Um, and, yeah, I'm kind of in a, a tight spot with my forest goblins. Forest goblins are having a hard time recently. And, uh, yeah, that's how the table looks. Magic phase got 10 power dice. Thank you, purple dice. Go ahead and I do an immolation right here. If he wants to come forward towards me, please go ahead and let him burn um, I go ahead and I turn off his uh, stupidity spell and I think I failed a couple spells so I just figured I'll just turn off his spell and just call it a day um, over your shooting phase these guys didn't move at all my, my chariots my a-rock none of them moved at all so I decided to just shoot apart his claw fiends over here I end up killing one of the two um, and then close combat over here he just freaking rips apart my freaking dogs like I expected it's gonna go ahead and start off his turn the sexy demons of lust turn two uh, demons of lust turn two he charges in here now this is bullshit you can see there's one coin by his harbinger or his claw fiends I shot like 30 something shots into him with tomahawks and skull splitter and all that I did one wound he charges in, of course, and I do all the stand and shoot, and he st I still fail to wound him. I only did one wound. That sucks. Um, over here, he's charging, double charging to my, my giant horde. He actually fails with the shrine, and he gets it only with that single guy, which is awesome. Um, and, uh, yeah, that, that was huge. That was huge. And uh, basically, that's how the table looks right now. He Again, like I said, he's afraid of Koopa and Krom together on the right side, um, which he doesn't know Krom runs away all the time since his father died of giant hordes. Krom's fear is hordes with banners. Um, and it looks like everybody else on the left side just moved closer. Now, he does make one fatal flaw here. One fatal flaw, and you're going to catch it in a second. Um, what happened to the freaking guy? don't know what happened whoa whoa I'm going too far forward go back go back James or you'll never return yeah it's gonna be turn to my turn soon no I think this is his turn turn to I have no idea whose turn to this is 
Anyways, um, yeah, I think I just took this picture late. That's all. That's all it is. All right, magic phase. He got seven power dice. He goes ahead and he does stupidity upon Crom again. Crom, and um, close combat over here. He just rips apart my forest goblins. I do not stick. I cannot stick. I do one extra wound. Whoop the fucking do. And uh, he's gonna chase me, and I think he catches me. To be honest, he runs this way towards the uh, flank of my spider, but my spider avoids the death of my stupid little guys. God, I I, I avoided that by the hair of my chinny chin chin but here's the fatal flaw and I think you guys can see it right now his chariot is out of line of sight of the A-Rock but that guy, other guy really isn't so I see that and I'm going to take advantage of it in a minute over here close combat he killed one one goblin and my goblins ripped apart the claw fiends and I get a quick I get a swift free form or whatever it's called a combat pivot and I turn this way because I got some charges to go. And it's going to go and start off turn two. Zod and Goblins. Zod. Zod and Goblins. Um, so I charge the K-Pack and my Goblins into that shrine. And my Goblins fail. I want to say that's what happened. I charge the A-Rock into the Claw Fiend. And I make sure that I'm overlapping where I'm going to clip that Shrine of Temptation. And I move Zod up closer. Um, I don't think I actually charge the, the, the Goblins. I think I'm going to just shoot up his uh, Sirens. Um, I move the Cave Goblins on that side to shoot up the Sirens. I move up Krom a little bit more aggressively. And I keep Koopa out of line of sight. Alright, Magic Phase. Got eight Power Dice. Go ahead. And I don't know what I did. I did something. I don't think I did anything. All I got is, um, I think I just tried to do some witchcraft spells because my pyromancy's dead. So I tried to do some witchcraft spells to boost movement, which I don't think really mattered too much. Um, so we're going to go into, and then shooting, I shot at his sirens. I might have killed one or two, but I don't have pictures of it. All right, over here, close combat. A Rock goes, does freaking five wounds onto this guy. This guy's just pops i don't think he did a single wound onto the a rock or she did a single wound to the a rock so it pops i overrun i hit right into the shrine good job a rock over here on the other hand my fucking chariots go in and i did two four six seven wounds on impacted seven wounds on impacted he ward saves four of those seven gotta be kidding me wow that's better than 50 percent so he got he only takes three wounds he ends up killing off one of my chariots but we stick because we're basically tied in combat and uh yeah that's how it looks as you can see i kind of avoided losing my back flank to those two the chariot and the, the other guys but for the most part that's that it's gonna start off turn three turn three uh demons of lust the sexy demons of lust he's gonna charge into Krom. he's like i gotta do something i gotta get some points he charges into Krom, and i don't think he actually gets it I don't think he does. Um, he moves these other sirens closer because he noticed I was just going to shoot him to pieces, shoot him to pieces. And he also wants to get his, his uh, shrine out of the way. Um, and then uh, that's how the table looks. Magic phase, he got nine power dice. He puts stupidity back up on Krom, which is okay by me. He puts up evocation over here to give himself like a leadership bomb or something like that. And then he tries to do the wheel turns over here, which is basically telling me like he's, he's, he's making sure that did he do the wheel turns oh he did spectral blades he did spectral blades and he's basically telling me go ahead and charge me i got all these buffs and that's what he starts doing he starts buffing up his character here his unit here and i'm just like that's cool i don't have to charge you it's gonna go ahead over here uh oh combat up there with the dogs and the chariots i'm sorry the k-pack he ends up destroying another one of my chariots and i run he chases and he chases crooked like so um, and basically he doesn't catch me. He, he only needed like a seven or an eight, but he rolled like a six. So he got one inch too shy. And not only that, like I said, he's opening it up to my, my, uh, bazooka and the horde. Um, over on this side with the spider, spider just rips apart that chariot. Holy shit. Rips apart the shrine of temptation. Shrine of temptation only did one wound back. The A-Rock faces the flank i'm like you know what this guy has all his buffs up but i'm gonna charge the flank anyways because it's the fuck motherfucking a rock the motherfucking a rock all right so i charge in and it's gonna start off my turn orcs and goblins zod and goblins turn three zod and goblins turn three the a rock's charging in zod's charging in the goblins are charging in everybody's going in fuck 
this. And I believe the Arak actually failed that charge. I only needed like a six, and I rolled a five. Um, over here, Koopa and Krom. Krom are both charging in. You know, that's going to kill my voice if I, keep, if I keep doing that. But anyways, they both charge into the freaking uh, sirens. I'm like, well, fuck it. They came in together. They're going to go ahead and do this together. Well, you know what? Koopa had different plans. He let Krom go in alone, and Koopa was like, nah, I'm cool back here. <laughs> um, Kaiser actually, or that... That's Koenig. Koenig actually sticks, rallies, turns around. I turn my cave goblins around to fire at those two guys that were left behind. And then, as you can see, Zod went in alone. Ugh. Um, and my goblins are right there. Uh, Magic Phase got five power dice, and I don't know what I did with them. Apparently, Magic Phase was either useless or I didn't really pay attention to taking pictures. Anyways, over here, close combat. Zod goes in. I believe he challenges. He does. He challenges and gives me a champ. And I freaking rape that champ. Rape him. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, he, uh, basically we stick. I don't think there, I think he had three ranks in a banner or two ranks in a banner. And I had the champ dead. And, uh, we're just going to stick. He loses maybe, a, he loses three bodies. That's what happens. He loses three bodies from demonic instability. Um, over here, close combat. Uh, impact hits. Crom, crom kills two of them with impact hits and then I whiff I mean I freaking whiff I think he had like minus one to hit anyways so I'm like hitting him on sixes or some shit like that I don't do shit and my thunderstorm didn't do shit so I lose I ch have a charge and two wounds he has three ranks and two banners I run away like a little pansy because you know what why not I mean he oh shit he racked up five wounds <laughs> oh shit he racked up five wounds holy crap yeah crime you can run dude you can run <laughs> just like my father all right and um crom runs away he ends up re he ended up chasing actually which is odd but he didn't go far enough i only went like three inches it looks like and i ran like a 10 uh or a 12 and uh that's how the table looks holy crap oh my god oh uh my goblins wiped out his shrine of temptation and i believe i i think we did that fight first i think i did the goblin fight first killed the shrine of temptation and i uh, overran on purpose to try to get closer to his flank and hope that crom was holding him for another round or so and then i'll get a nice beautiful flank charge uh and a front charge with koopa and the horde but um that didn't happen because crom ran away and did not hold up the job like he was supposed to uh oh it's gonna start off turn four uh demons of lust turn four demons of lust turn four he charges into crom crom keeps running he charges into koopa and i'm like you know what koopa's gonna run too fuck it Koopa, you fat bastard. I just figured he's going to fail charges everywhere. Why not? So he, <laughs> I mean, we were really far from him. I think I had like seven inches before he declared the charge. And then I rolled the freaking swift stride and I get the hell out and he doesn't have swift stride. So both of these run far, far away and he just can't catch me. Magic phase got five power dice. And as you can see, this is basically how the table looks. Um, he goes ahead and he keeps buffing up his uh, his unit over here. He keeps giving him like spectral blades and and touch of the reaper or whatever it is. I don't even know what he got on this this side. Anyways, uh, he ends up oh he ends up doing wheel turns on these guys. That's what he does, and that's the only spell that goes off. Everything else was stopped. Um, close combat. He refuses to challenge. And or I challenge and he refuses to take it. So Zod just goes nuts and rips apart five of the sirens he basically is going to lose a couple more from crumble but he cannot wound zod even with the wheel turns he cannot wound zod hitting on fours rolling on uh wounding on fours re-rolling wounds on fours and then i got armors and ward saves zod is just a tank i'm gonna miss him with the if and when they remove the bluffers helm so let's start off turn four uh zod and goblins zod and goblins turn four uh so i charged the a rock in finally i had to turn the uh, bazooka and the horde this way to face the flank and I rally Koopa and Krom. What I end up doing though is I end up using uh, Kaiser. Well, I don't know which one this is. Kaiser or Koenig. Koga's the fat one. It's Koga Kaiser Koenig is the way I say it. Yeah, so this is Kaiser. So I leave Kaiser there and I actually just walk him in front as chaff. I'm like, you know what? You're not going to be able to go forward. You're not going to be able to go to my goblins and I'm going to have you pincered in this section over here so basically i think we're actually playing breakthrough to be honest i think we are playing breakthrough we're not playing flags we're playing breakthrough so bazooka and the horde are actually doing a good job staying on, up on the, his side especially since we have 18 inch zones 
Anyways, uh, and here's an up no shot of me because I took a picture of uh, hit the button there wearing a Norway shirt. All right, magic phase got seven power dice. Go ahead and I do some uh, random shit over here. I actually just shot him with bows because my magic didn't do shit. Killed one of the freaking um, these guys over here. Close combat over here. Holy crap. Oh, Chewie, you always call me when I'm making videos. In all fairness, he calls me all the time. Um, so close combat over here. Uh, since the A-Rock is involved in this combat, holy shit. Between Zod and the A-Rock, we pop the unit. I have a charge, a downhill charge, a flank, a big flank, and then the A-Rock does like eight wounds. Zod does like four wounds. This guy just does not have any wounds anywhere. He only had like one or two guys attacking the A-Rock to begin with. And I just rip them apart. A Rock overruns this way. I turn Zod this way to protect the cave goblins. It's going to go ahead and start off turn five. Turn five! Demons of Lust. Demons of Lust, turn five. He's going to charge into Kaiser here. He's going to charge a long charge into my goblins over here. Well, guess what? I still have fanatics left. So I'm going to go ahead and release the fanatics. But you know what? I actually release them backwards. I'm going to let him deal with the guys behind Kaiser to deal with those fanatics. And I do. And I throw them this way, as you can see. And they don't go far enough. They don't go far enough at all. But basically, if he, um, I wanted to, him to close the door onto Kaiser and touch both fanatics and i just failed to do that properly and now not only that the the, the fanatics are actually in koopa's way <laughs> you'll see anyways magic phase got 11 power dice goes ahead and does deceptive glamour onto the goblins uh and he did it with double sixes so he ends up blowing off a chunk of his his uh demons here his sirens here he ends up doing evocation of souls which does something for leadership i believe and it really does it matter uh close combat he rips apart kaiser and he basically reforms yeah i think he just re i don't know if this is an overrun or what i think it might have been an overrun i think it's an overrun on purpose this way i don't know why it turned i don't know what happened here anyways over here close combat holy shit the prophet and the cow basically this whole unit actually killed that other coughing good job guys didn't even think you guys could do it and i turn them this way basically to fight with the big fight that everybody's in on everybody's in on this fight all right it's gonna go ahead and start off turn five zod and goblins zod and goblins we're gonna do koopa the a-rock the freaking bazooka and the horde and the cave goblins all charging in now Unfortunately, there is one fanatic in the way, so I figured the best way, the best person to take that fanatic is Koopa, and Koopa does and takes two wounds in the process of doing it like a champ, but he kind of shrugs it off like, ah, 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 Koopa's here. Magic phase got eight power dice. Now, they, I don't know if you guys saw it, but I'm going to go back to this picture here. The A-Rock actually has a front charge into those guys, and I have to run around my goblins, turn 90 degrees, and then touch the tip of the other guys. That is crazy, crazy foresight. Anyways, so I go ahead and I do it. Everybody gets in, right? So I go ahead and I do Deceptive Glamour on his unit, or... Yeah, does have a glamour on his unit, so he's gonna have to hit me on minus one, and basically that's all, all I did. So now, even if he has lightning reflexes, he's gonna be hitting me on fours. He ends up close combat. He ends up doing five wounds onto goblins here, and between I am not shitting you. I threw nets on him, and he was like, "What?" And I go, "This is the only time I paid fucking sixty points for nets. I'm gonna use these fucking nets." So I go ahead and I throw nets on him, and he's like, "Shit!" And now he's strength two against goblins goblins he's wounding goblins on fives he's hitting me on fours wounding me on fives that is hilarious and uh sure enough between everything going i mean between everything going i popped that fucking unit he only had like 15 bodies on there and then this picture here it looks like he only has like four left and then i think that was before thunder stops thunder stop kills a couple more and he's just like there's just no way possible this is the last picture i have and this is a glorious picture by the way because everybody's there and um I have one turn to reform and make my goblins huge and walk into the objective if I am already not in the objective. It is a big 20-0 victory for the Shyhammer goblins, Zodden goblins. Oh, that was brutal for, for Terrace, but it was a fun game. I had a fun time. I don't think he did, but I had a fun time. 
And um, it was. It, I'm actually happy that I got to play him. I see him every tournament, but I never, ever, ever get a chance to play him. So this was a fun game to actually get a chance to play him. And uh, yeah, that was awesome. Um, okay, for points, you know what? I'm not gonna lie. I did the recording of this video before I did points. So MVP. I actually have two contenders for the MVP, maybe three. Ah, I'm going to give it to the A-Rock. You know, I wanted to give it to the Bazooka and the Horde, and I wanted to give it to, to General Zod, but I think the A-Rock, I mean, killed both units and a Shrine and Claw Fiends. The A-Rock, probably, the points are probably going to roll up, and she probably took the majority of the points. Including both the general and the BSB and both harbingers. Yeah, the A-Rock probably racked up the most amount of points. Probably caught up to Bazooka and the Horde in points. I don't know. Bazooka and the Horde did take out another unit and the Shrine of Temptation as well. So you guys will see when it comes up. But basically, the only thing I lost in this game was the dogs and the Iron Boys and the Forest Goblins and my wizard. But it is a huge victory. Wow. Anyways, guys. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I enjoy making it. Hit like, hit share, hit subscribe. Leave any comments in the uh, or feedback in the comment section down below. I always like to hear and read what you guys have to say about my games. And besides that, guys, if you guys want your own pair of Koopa Dice, I am dead serious, Koopa Dice, you guys can join my Patreon. I have a link down below. You guys can go into my Patreon and earn yourself not only a pair of Koopa Dice, but get yourself a chance to get in a raffle to win a painted banner by me, Shyhammer. Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoy that, and I enjoy making these. I know I already said that, but guys, till next time, take care and peace. I have one more game, round five, coming up against... What did I play in round five? Oh, man, why am I trying blanks? Who did we play in round five? Oh, man, I don't remember right now. I have to look at the pictures. <laughs> That's really bad. Anyways... Uh, I'm going to pull up the pictures because why not? I'm already here. Let's see. Screenshots. Nope, not screenshots. God damn it. Strength in numbers. Dum, 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 dum. Oh, against Jeff Durham. How could I forget that? Anyways, round five against Jeff Durham. All right, guys. See you next time. Take care. Peace.